speech up. This time we're going to try to get the Roadrunner running. I know, I know we said we we're going to make it dry, but we're not going to get that. We're not by Christmas. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's, it's almost February. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, February is Thursday. So there's a lot involved. Yeah. You know, it is, it is what it is. <clears throat> and waiting on parts, you know, that's, that's our go-to catchphrase when we're a little lazy. And we made it pretty yeah. along the way. So we did what we weren't supposed to do and painted the engine bay and painted the whole underside of the car. Which is, in the words of David Freiberger, don't get it right, just get it running. But we have to get it at least a little bit right. Because it's a Mopar, and Mopar people are weird. Yeah. We brought the Roadrunner in here, and we're going to fog it with Krylon or Rust-Oleum. Where is it at? Rust-Oleum Colonial Red. It is pretty close. So over here is where it was still painted from the factory, kind of up there. It's not that close but it's better than being painted black because you can't have black engine bays on a Mopar it's got to be painted body color also we're just gonna fog this whole underside with this and then go over it with some truck bed liner and hopefully that looks okay-ish I mean there's still a bunch of grease on here and I'm just gonna paint right over it it'll be fine it'll be fine everything's fine it's fine yep looks horrible actually it looks real bad <laughs> but, but it'll be a good base layer so when we put the stuff over this stuff you might see a little red through and it might look right or well, it might have just been a complete waste of time it's we horrible. will yeah. we will see we'll, yep <laughs> oh god this looks bad <laughs> we're using the uh the dinosaur brand we'll see how this works we you sprayed, you sprayed a, a Jeep with it years ago. Yeah, Jeep Tub TJ. It's beautiful. This stuff sprays so nice. But it's about four years old. We're gonna we'll see. see. <laughs> we'll see if it still is good. Hopefully. I mean, I don't know. It's been in a basement. It hasn't been in the garage. So. The 383 is getting there. We're almost, almost ready. We got the dipstick in. And finally got these pulleys up here. Sorry if there's a bunch of wind noise from that. We'll, I don't know how that's actually going to go. But we'll, oh God, it looks bad. Oof. Okay, so this is what we were going for to where it kind of looks like it was a red car don't mind the diff and you just painted under coating over it we're gonna get another kit because we kind of ran out to do the rest of the front and just kind of go over this with a good solid coat but I mean for two idiots in a garage it looks pretty good and it's not under rubberized undercoat no it's, it's truck bed liner yeah which is a lot thicker a lot better Rubberized undercoating is kind of garbage. And we painted the engine bay. It's it's not R6, but it's darkish red. It'll look okay. The camera doesn't quite show it justice, the, the actual color. It's a lot darker in person than you're seeing right now. But we're going to throw these, the 383 and the 727 together. We, uh, well, we didn't make New Year's, did we? Or Christmas. What? We can do a burnout in a truck. Yeah, we can do a burnout in the Mustang, I, I, or the Rambler, or Rambler? I don't know. But not the Roadrunner. But not the Roadrunner. Sorry, <laughs> we uh, did not fulfill our promise. 
But no, we're gonna. We ate Christmas cookies. It was lazy. <laughs> yeah, we spent time with family. Sorry, guys. <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, we put the transmission and the engine together. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we made it. And we're gonna try to throw it back into the car that it deserved to be in. Mm. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully, the headers for this is a lot easier than that Barracuda. That was kind of a disaster to try to get those in there. But there's slightly more room in here. I, it really doesn't look like there is. But apparently there is. A couple inches, I think. Both we'll see. Sides. We'll see how this goes. All right, I'm going to set you guys up on a little tripod, and we'll throw this in here. Okay. See? way easier on a B body than an A body. That is for sure. This one, we barely, we didn't even need to do anything besides snake it up from the bottom. This side just kind of had to lift the engine up just a little bit to clear the torsion bar down there. But I mean, it's it's in there. We, uh, <clears throat> we, we might've forgot to get exhaust gaskets. So we might go run and go get those. But, you know, I got, I got all my hands and fingers. There's no, uh, no more cuts this time. No, we're good. What about you? You got any yeah. cuts or anything? What? A why do we damage? But I'm fine. Why do we do a bodies? No, ever. B bodies cool. for life. Because they're cool. Look at that. Look yeah. at all the clearance. This is Summit brand two hundred and fifty dollar headers, and they fit really well. Like like well, this one's not fully on, but when it's on, I mean, there's there's loads of clearance. That's nice. That's very nice. All right, we're gonna go get some gaskets. Finish this thing up. Later. We got some gaskets. Come on, that didn't work. What, come on, install. There we go, installed. See, we're kind of getting somewhere-ish with the instrument cluster and all the wiring. Yeah. I don't know why they took everything out of this car, but they did. It's kind of hard to find out where everything goes searching through a bunch of different wiring diagrams and such. This is fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> well, this looks a little better in here. Not much. I got most of the harness hooked up. There's a couple of weird ones that are just kind of clipped off and I think they go like this. Goes to, I think, the door switch on that side, which I don't think we have. I don't know if I can just leave it just loose. Will that do anything? I... <laughs> We'll see what happens. And we're back in the shop. We all got pretty sick there for the last week or so. so we didn't really get anything done. Uh, today's thing is brakes. Uh, I mean, we've got a little bit things done, but not a whole lot. I'll show you, show you what we got. Since you've been gone, you know, we've got the distributor hooked up. We got the carburetors on, fans on, radiators in there. We've got most of the harness Kind of taped together this is from a 67 but it's gonna work uh, all this harness was kind of wonky because they they got it set up for that chrysler ignition plug or whatever so i had to go back through and rerun a couple of the wires i know i know i know this wire is supposed to be blue going to the distributor but it's red i don't have a blue wire don't yell at me what <laughs> Uh, but the inside is in there, you know, the, the gauge cluster, the switch panel, most of the harness is in there, hooked up, ready to go. I, that's yellow wire, still don't really know where that goes. We've got a taillight harness back here, kind of ran in place. This is from a 68, but it's close enough. I think we'll have to clip those off and run that to the little bumper doohickeys. Where are they at? Yeah, these little guys that go in the bumper for the reverse lights. You got a drive shaft in it. Um, I think that's about it. But please, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy a project car, 
the first thing you do shouldn't be take every single piece off of it because people lose stuff and we're still scrounging trying to find stuff. We still don't have an ignition switch. We still don't have, like where do the door panels go? They're probably trashed, but at least having something is better than nothing. We do have some of the kick panels. Uh, it's just, yeah. But anyway, back to brakes. We're gonna use a little flaring tool, kind of make our own brake line with the Amazon special. Oh, huh. where is it? Oh, I moved it. It's over here. With the Amazon special, we'll see how this goes. Made in China. Thanks, China. Did a little. So we did a little Chinese blueprinting. This is down here on the frame rail, and looks like the rear of the master cylinder, which usually goes to the front brakes. So the rear one goes to the top. This goes to the right brake. This goes to the left brake. And then the front of the master cylinder goes into here for the rear brakes and then out to the back. We'll see if we can remember that. <laughs> Left, right, left, down, square. Yep. Yeah, cheat code. What you doing? Uh, putting the bolts in from the uh, inside firewall. The studs to, are gone. I'm going to try to put this master cylinder on. I think it's probably got a plate or something, doesn't it? Uh, I, I want to say it was part of the, like, the, the master, what do they call that? The actual brake bracket. Oh, tell me what that looks like. It looks like a stud. I mean, here, give me a second. Okay, this is going to suck. It's barely long enough. I've got one that's about a quarter of an inch longer. Try that. Okay. Hey, can you uh, push the brake pedal? There we go. Yeah, just, yeah there's that little yeah. thingy. Going to pop it in the hole. Uh, can't believe Doug didn't say a thing about that. I know. So, oh, I'm just cutting the line right here. Is this about <clears> where it needs to be? I can add a. A nice little bend to it, make it look good. I'll show you in a minute how to put a double flare, which you already probably know. I know, Bill. I know, Bill. You've done it a hundred times, but little Henry over here has never done it before. So we're all learning. That's okay. We're all learning. It's okay. It's a new process. We actually had to look it up again. So, <laughs> you know, you've done it 4,000 times, but then when it's time to actually do it, because you haven't done it in six months, you kind of forget. I think I've only done it like 3,000 times. Oh, 3,700 3, times? 3,700. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. And, you know, these, these little tubing cutters are the greatest thing known to man. I love them. They're but so good. But you can't try to bite too much. If you, if you squeeze it too much, you will collapse the tube. Yeah. So you cut little by little. It's long. Quarter turn. Yeah. Spin. But it'll put a nice little cut on it and be done. Sixteenth of a turn. <clears throat> spin. Yeah. Sixteenth of a turn. Spin. There we go. Then take that. That's what? You want that? Yeah. yeah. What I like to do is take just like a whatever file you can find. Just kind of dig it out. Dig it. And then can you dig it? It just makes your flare prettier. Will it make a diff difference? No, but it makes me feel better. All right, so now, bend it flat. Uh, gotta figure out what size this master cylinder takes. That size. Yep, it's gone forever. <clears throat> yeah, I got a bunch of flares over here. Like this. Wow, bigger than that. Hopefully, Hopefully that's it. Should be, we have two of them. 
Is that it? That was a little loose. But it probably is. That's probably it. Is there another one that's... No. Okay. Well, give that a shot. Hmm. Look in the box, make sure that it gave us one. As you can tell, we're professionals. We do this all the time. Where did the thingy go? Sure. <clears throat> Check again, make sure this is the right one. Yep. Before you put your flare, put that on. That, 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 the most important step. that is the most important step. Because let me tell you. So you can't put it on after you flare it because yeah. the flare is bigger than. Yeah. Okay. I should probably straighten this out a little bit. That is not going to be fun. Nine sixteenths. It all goes to hell. <laughs> I like that thing. Yeah, it's good. Do you want to set and start over? No. <clears throat> Perfect. So now you have a straight spot, so that way, you know, when it goes into the master, it'll be fine. Okay, now. Tighten it up, and you want it to be. <clears throat> come on, work your way up. You want it to be about the thickness of that first lip right here. That's close enough. Tighten this one up, and I always tighten this one up first to about right there, so you can get the flare tool over it, and then you tighten this one up all the way. So that way your uh, tool doesn't get in the way, or this little wing that doesn't get in the way of your tool. And, then, and the first thing, put the little guy in here. This is going to be really fun. Lots of space. Lots of space. I just kind of center it in there and run it up. It may look like it's going crooked, it'll always center itself, it'll be fine. <clears throat> How clean does the edge have to be? Do you have to polish it or anything, or is it just deburring it? Just deburring it. Come on. <clears throat> then, slide that over. This guy out. Set that in the hole. Bring it up. And not real tight, just a good. <clears throat> and you have a nice little double flare. You can try with a single flare, but it never really seals correctly. Just 
in this one. If your left hand is good enough. Boop, there you go. I still have the flare. And bring it around here. Around where you were. <coughs> where is that little bender? <clears throat> Put it at the end first, right? What? You want to put it at the end first? Yeah. And get it as straight as you can. Straight over. Get over there. <clears throat> well, I need a little more. And get it started. Need a little bit more. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all right. We're, I think we're, we're getting right started. There. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now, once they're both started, you can kind of finagle it around a little bit to keep it away. You don't want it to chafe on anything. <clears throat> it's not going to look professional like the way Mopar did it, but it's going to look good enough. And the car will have brakes. That's all that matters. Boom, there you go, brake lines. We're gonna finish up the rest of it, put the hoses on, and then we're gonna replace some wheel cylinders and all the rest of the brake hardware. You've probably seen it a hundred times, but we'll show you our way of doing it. See you in a minute. Would you just look at it? Oh, would you just look at it? <laughs> See, it's believe really awesome. Womp womp. See that right there? That bolt? Yeah. 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 That's just missing because they decided they were going to take it off and it'd be great and good ideas well, to take it off so they can, you know, store the or anything. Yeah. I bet you there's a bracket that they took mm -hmm. off because, you know, they're smart and intelligent and really good. And I love when they do that because they're going to restore it, you know. like this it fits in there and that's where it goes yeah yeah let's see you know that bracket that I was talking about that they okay. took off that's it I'm gonna take this off and go blast it and yeah. it'll be pretty okay look at that thing off oh it's coming off Looks a lot better when it's blasted. Wow. We'll put a uh, 
completely professional Cryline prank job on it real quick. That'd be great. That professional paint job. Yeah. Not really. Well, as you can expect, the, uh, the back ones that are on the axle are rusted out and broke when you tried to break them loose, so now to make these ones too. At least we have a template, which I'm gonna try to follow and then realize that it never comes out right and then do it whatever I want back there anyway. <laughs> And thankfully, Doug had bought some to run on his 240. Or else we would be out of brake line. Okay. And here. Looking terrible already. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna cut it real quick. And then Good enough. Tubing cutters are awesome. Brake lines are so much fun. Might have cut it too short. Maybe not. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That should be close for this one over here. And I helped. I'm helping. I helped. All right, so that should be this one. That goes in here. Oh, yeah, that'll work. We'll paint it black. Put it back. And then you just give you a nice little right angle into that. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, let's see, we're not into it. Over here, though. And then. There we go. Yeah. yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. All right. Got to find a little. That's it, right? You just making noises back there, Doug? Approximately 10 hours later. These are new brake lines back here, finished up, and then that one's hooked up to the rest of the car. So all the brake lines are done. He's got this brake assembly, the whole drum done, and then working on this side. While he was doing that, I ran a new fuel line. It's just some 3 8 aluminum tubing from Amazon. I think it was a dollar a foot. So there's that wrapped around here. Run it all the way to the front, delivering the fuel. We put some little P, P clamps or ADL clamps, holding it all up. Got to feed the beast. All the way up to the fuel pump, and then that factory line ran up to the carburetor. So it's getting all the fuel, the fuel tank's in there, everything's good to go. And then we'll show you the process of throwing these drum brakes back on here in a minute. We're finished putting the axle back in. So the last thing you saw was us doing the back brakes. And then we started on the front ones. This one's done. This one's not. But 
The problem is we tried to lift it up to get it off the locks to bring it down. And this piston over here started peeing a bunch of uh, fluid out. So seal this went bad. seal is bad in this piston. So we can't lift it at all because as soon as you hit the button, it just starts squirting and it won't go up. So what? And it's eight foot tall. Yeah. So you have to lift it all the way up just to get it out because it's like a captured uh, little box in there. And there's a road runner stuck on it. And so we can't lift it all the way to the top lock. We're one, we're one from the top and we can't get it off. So what are we gonna do? So the cables are supposed to equalize it. It's supposed to keep all of them equal, even if one of them goes bad. So we're gonna use, we're gonna block off the hydraulic pressure to this one. We're gonna raise it with that one. Hopefully the cables hold just enough to get it off and then we'll lower it probably pretty fast because it has all the weight on one cylinder and so. if it gets wonky you'll see it here hopefully this it on live <laughs> rusty piece of shit road runner doesn't fall off of here but you know if it does in insurance insurance run Ma run <laughs> yeah run run all right wish us luck well i'm so excited i just can't i can't hide it i'm i'm yep. about to lose control yep very mm, Yep. All right, let's try it. All right, so I'm gonna start by taking that top one off. Hopefully, grab a one size fits most. Take that loose. Hopefully, it doesn't just pee a bunch of fluid everywhere. It probably will. It might. <coughs> you don't know. Who knows? What did we? What did we put that on there with? Holy hell, Torque. <clears throat> yeah. What the hell? What? There we go. Mm, it's on. Good lord. That's tightening, idiot. But, you know, it's a bunch of detergents, so it's we're actually cleaning the floor. Do you remember that in the, the roadkill episode where they spilled all the ATF when they were building that charger and they said, well, technically, on this guy's garage, he goes, technically, you owe us money because we cleaned your garage floor because ATF is a bunch of detergent. <laughs> I don't think that's really how that works, bud. Yeah. Well, we're just going to say that here, though. They're making a TV show, though, so. Yeah. Actually, I think then it was still YouTube. Roadkill was? Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so what we did is we ran the hose back down and all we really did was down here, took where it went uh, out of the whatever, there was a little union that went to the piston and just put another union here so it's bypassing this piston altogether and it's just running straight to that one. The piston should let it off. I we're scared to death of this. Ah, it's okay. We're, we're gonna, gonna set this up over here, <clears throat> so that way you guys can see what happens. Cross your happened fingers. Was the road runner fell down on sideways. All oh, right. No. Now let's come back here. <clears throat> can you go back here. Oh, that's better. Yeah. I'm gonna raise you up. So, yes. When this comes down, is that gonna hurt that? It's not, is it? I, I know it shouldn't. Oh God! So much crap back here. <clears throat> All right. Well, here goes nothing. Send it up. Hopefully, we got enough fluid in there. Okay. Um, we're gonna raise it up. Let let it sit there for a minute. Ready? Yeah. There it goes. So that one's cold. I can see it. It's going up.
should be close. All right. You want me to lower this one off? Well, no, I don't know if you can yet. Yeah, it's off. This one's off. Let me go over to that side. Um, not yet. See what happens. Okay, back up. Back Should up. be. There we go. A little more. Okay. This out of the way. Off. I'm out of the way. Okay. Here we go. Come on, baby. Please don't fall. It's even. Oh, thank God. Woo! Well, it's off. It's off. My God, that's scary. That was nerve wracking. <laughs> okay, so the rotary lift did what it was supposed to do with the equalizer cables. Yeah. Thank you guys for making a nice made in the United States product. Well, I mean, even so also Ooh. you got to think about it. These cables are probably 40 years old too. Uh, I mean, that's why the piston seal went out. Like, like it just happens. It's 40 years old. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. Am I giggling? <laughs> that's uh, that's nervous energy right there. Yeah, that was really scary. We didn't really want to lose this car. I didn't but, either. You know, it was almost worth it if you guys would <laughs> see something, you know, kind of, no, it wouldn't be worth it. No. It would suck. Yeah. Uh, well, it's off. Good job, rotary lift. <laughs> All right, let's push her back. I'm gonna move the legs out of the way. I gotta put some air in this tire. Remember, we ha always have the one tire. There's always one. It can't be a good proper <laughs> project car. Man, that was scary. All right. All right, we're gonna push it back and then somehow figure out how to lift this son of a bitch up. Engine hoist. Yeah. Engine hoist with the, uh, with the jack stands. All right, so we were gonna use like an engine hoist to lift it up, but we realized that it's, I mean, it's working. So we just used both of them to lift them both up by the cables and it's on the top lock now. So if you look in here, I don't know if I can get in there, right? It's just barely sitting up there. Come on, focus. So I think if we take this set screw loose down here, and lift the piston up, we should be able to get it out. If not, I don't really know what to do here, but I think we can. I think, I think you know, yeah, yeah, that should work. So we're gonna try to do that. We'll set you up on a little tripod. Also beware, there's probably gonna be some plumber's crack showing. You're welcome. <coughs> I think it's got uh, a mix between fine and Coarse threads under there. Man, that don't feel good at all. Yeah, that ain't even close. Is it rusted? It might be. I mean, it's got all the penetrating oil in the world on it, though. Yeah, I don't. Is that the bolt? Is that what it takes to get that off, or is that a. I don't know. Does it just lift up? It looked like there's a set that should be it if there's a set screw down there, you know. That's just the yeah. So after four hours of fighting with this thing, we finally got the bolt to break, and it's still stuck in there. So we need to drill that out, and we don't really have a drill bit long enough. There's the bolt broke right at the. It's just. Okay, we're done. It's deflated. The Roadrunner is off. It's off the lift, which is good. Good. We'll just, you know, thumbs up on that one. But we're, we're just done. We're tired. It's 13 degrees outside, which we have a heater in here, but the, the concrete doesn't heat up and my feet are frozen. So. And oily. And oily. It just is a giant mess. Yeah. So we'll check back tomorrow once we have a drill bit and hopefully get this thing back up, get it rolling. And maybe... Maybe we'll uh, we'll drive it yeah. next week or the week after or next month. We'll see. See you guys. Well, uh, developments. This is how we had to get it because you have to lift this carriage all the way to the top to get the piston out, and then once we got it all the way up, we could kind of rock it back and forth. Because it was there was rocks and dirt and stuff. It in that, finally came out in that socket, and it was like 
Well, I mean, it lifted the car, so it was jammed in there. It's like mechanically welded. And so, this is it sitting out here. And take a look at these seals. I mean, you can see the edges there. That's is, yeah, that's not good. Destroyed. Isn't that great when you pull something apart and you see something wrong, though? Yeah. I mean, it's like, oh my God, the seals are beautiful. Why is it leaking? And the seal kit is twelve dollars. So I mean, it's not even. It is kind of a. It's a bear to get apart, but. I mean, twelve bucks to fix it ain't too bad. Where are the seals at, John? They're in my car. <laughs> My car's at my house, not here. Oops. Oopsies. All right. Well, both pistons are rebuilt and put back. You can tell because we painted them black. You know the old saying, paint it black and put it back. We put new seals in it and we left it sit overnight off of the locks just to see if it holds pressure. Make sure there's no leaks anywhere. The chrome looks good. Doesn't look like it's leaking anywhere. So now, back to the car and back on, you know, brakes, like what we were doing before. I'm just kidding. I know what you actually want to see, and what we want to see is this thing running. So screw the brakes for now. We're just going to try to get it running. He's trying to figure out the gasket for the, uh, the fuel filler neck. Uh, I painted a, a handmade battery tray. We're getting the starter in. Uh, but everything else is pretty much ready to go, including the horn. You got to have the horn, you know. Beep, beep. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. Pounds. Good, good for you. Well, none of the uh, none of the wiring is actually working at all. The headlights don't work. The key is technically on right now. Who knows if that switch works? Uh, we also didn't run a chassis ground, which totally could be it. But we're just going to run a hot wire to the coil to energize the coil, and then see if it fires off. Go from there. <clears throat> Wow. So we just ran a hot wire to the positive side, straight to the battery, and then he's gonna jump that starter solenoid. That'll be loud. Yeah, Let's see if I can get this. Oh, wonder that wonder if that solenoid's going.
Well, it ran. Yeah. You heard it. Get frustrated. We just need to go through, spend about an hour, all both, and then you know, check the. Did you the fuse box with your? No. Yeah, that'd be cool. No, the fuse box is probably trashed. That's probably the problem. I know the fuse box had a lot of corrosion on it, but it still had fuses in it, and I just I run out of time to. Yeah. Mm. Well, we can. Uh, this is nice. I like this. Please oh, don't God. take every goddamn part off of a car. Don't do it. Don't do Just it. Don't do That's it. That's not cause restoring. Just because you can be, don't take the whole thing apart. You know? They can paint it. <laughs> they can paint it with shit on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Unless yeah. you are at exactly at the point of sending it to paint right now. Or if you're going to ask to dip the body like it's a, you know. Hundred thousand dollar handy car or something. I, I don't don't ask to dip the body. It's a it's a waste of time, waste of money. It's a three eighty three Roadrunner. It's yeah, nothing special. It is. But I mean, like you know, if it was something expensive and you wanted to go faster, you could acid dip it. Wouldn't it be thinner metal? Yeah. Wouldn't it be lighter? Yeah, it would be lighter. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> it also makes you feel a little funny while you're driving. Okay. Well, that was fun. Hey. All right. Just kidding. We're gonna try it one more time. Ready? Did it ruin the starter? You think? I hope not. Okay. Ready? Yep. Cut it. Okay. Something's up. Let me spin it real quick. Put the bar. Okay. That I just have in my hand. There it is. <laughs> When I did it, I heard it go click. See what I mean? Yeah. I wonder if it's not retracting or something. Uh -huh. Okay. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Start. Starter. Starter does. Okay. Um, well. I'm going to do that right now because I and yeah, I might even. Hey, hey. Maybe even drop it down and put a bit of bit and hit the switch again and see if it runs outside the car. Probably. Because the, the engine's not locked up. The engine's fine. No, I can. Yeah, it's easy to turn. It's not the engine. It's. Nope. I think I'm probably just going to end the video here. I know they waited a month, but. It's the way shit goes. And yeah. just say, hey. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, sorry if we didn't end on a high note, but this is this is the real hot rodding. Here it goes. This is exactly what happens. We we you set a date. You think, hey, we want to get this run running by whatever. Here we are a month later. It's still not running. 
the starter won't turn over the engine. Something as simple as that is going to yeah. eat your lunch or a rusted bolt or whatever the hell it is at that point. You know what it could have been? What? Well, we had that deep freeze and I never took the starter out of the Barracuda. With I'm, water in it? Yeah, I'm wondering if it got water and it, it froze. Maybe it's separated the brushes, broke the brushes. I don't know. It's warranty cover or something like that. <laughs> hell, I don't know. They won't ever look inside of it. No. But, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next time, we promise, the next time you see this car, it'll be running and driving. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Burnouts by June. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully before that. Hopefully March. That's what March. we're going for. March. You know, it's, it's almost February now. Indie show. That'd be fun. I know you've waited a month to see this, and we were, we were trying our best to try to get it running and driving, because I was like, wow, we can't end the video without it running and driving because it'd be a cool intro, it'd be a cool exit. I mean, it, it would just make it so much better, but you know, it is It is what it is. This but it's is, got a purple horn on it. It does have a purple horn. Yeah. That's, that's good. I mean, it just is, it is what it is. Yep. Sorry, next time though, we promise, it'll be running and driving and doing burnouts as soon as we fix the pinion seal in the rear end that we just found that's bad. And maybe get seats in it, and maybe a windshield, and maybe a bumper. And we don't need a bumper to drive, but we might need a is that against the law? Driving a car without a windshield. Does anybody have any 69 Roadrunner parts? We need some. We need a windshield. Yep. We don't really want to spend $500 on windshield. Yeah. Front bumper that's presentable, you know, straight, maybe be re-chrome. All right. Well, yeah. that's it. Anyway, for everybody.